Building a railroad is a unique blend of heavy construction and high technology. Let's sir, understand control point Y 331 main track 2 no, control point Y 319 main track 2 no, is that correct? Kevin? Starting in the mid 1800s, the industry transformed the United States from an agricultural country to a mostly industrialized nation. Railroad construction methods have vastly improved since the building of the Transcontinental Railroad, where manual labor of thousands of people was used. In this DVD, you will learn how modern railroads are constructed, from aerial and ground studies to computer-aided design, to earthwork, bridge building, laying tracks, and testing. This planning, design, and construction would take place in Nevada during the construction of the planned railroad to Yucca Mountain. Railroads are built because somebody wants to move large amounts of cargo from point A to point B efficiently and safely. But building a rail line is a lengthy and involved process. Engineers must perform extensive aerial and ground surveys of potential routes. They look at obstacles like mountains, washes, or rivers, which would need tunnels, bridges, or detours. They study environmental concerns like wildlife ranges, springs, or cultural areas. They review who owns or controls the land. And they evaluate the ground itself. Is it stable? Was it the site of a landslide or major movement years ago? Are there earthquake zones nearby? Where does the water drain, and are there underground water supplies? All of this information must be captured as planners study the potential railroad, and it's being done in Nevada. Trains cannot make tight turns or climb steep hills. Everything must be done very gradually. For example, if a train must go through a mountain pass at an elevation of 5,500 feet, and the valley floor is at 2,000 feet, engineers may have to elevate the track or use a trestle that stretches for several miles and then cut through part of the hillside to allow for the gradual climb. All of these considerations go into the alignment or route of the railroad. Planners try to choose the best compromise between uphills, downhills, curves, and environmental impacts. Planners also decide how many tracks are needed. Heavy traffic areas have two or more, but the Nevada rail line is expected to have one track with special passing areas called sidings, where trains can wait while another train passes safely. Computer-aided design makes all of these decisions easier. Designers are able to get a complete picture of the planned railroad and do complex analyses of route options. For the Nevada rail line, engineers analyzed more than 700 miles of possible rail routes, including alternatives within routes, during the environmental impact statement process. After the extensive planning process, it's time to start actual construction. It could take four years to complete the earthwork for the rail line, building up some areas, leveling off others. Field-based construction camps and access roads will support workers and equipment. The main building materials for railways are rock, gravel, and soil for the ground preparation, and steel and concrete for tracks, bridges, and trestles. Sand, clay, rocks, gravel, and other fill material make up the critical base on which workers lay the rails. The top layer of this base is gravel called ballast, this is where the ties are placed 24 inches apart on average. This ballast must be stable, well-drained, and strong enough to disperse the incredible weight of today's freight trains. Regular maintenance is performed to be sure the rail and its bed are suitable for heavy freight shipments. Once the base of the railroad is complete, it's time to lay the ties and rails. The railroad to Yucca Mountain will use concrete ties, which results in lower maintenance and provides a stable platform for the rails. Rail is laid on top of the ties and fastened. Rail will be installed in quarter-mile lengths made up of 78-foot sections welded together in the field. Planners working on the Nevada rail line estimate they could lay one mile of track per day, five to seven days a week. Depending on which route is selected, track laying will take one to two years. Often, 
a special track-laying machine can make its way down the very track it just laid. Bridges, trestles, underpasses, and overpasses will be used where needed. Small bridges also help livestock cross under the tracks safely. After track laying, the process shifts from heavy construction to high technology. Modern railroads have sophisticated means of communicating with and controlling trains, unlike systems in the 1800s which used flagmen and hand switches. This signaling, communication, and control gear would be installed next, including voice, data, and video systems. These systems allow controllers to monitor and control train locations 24 hours a day. Radioactive material shipments, like those planned in Nevada, must also have extra security measures. They include armed escorts in their own train car and satellite tracking, as well as other measures. Rail lines need support facilities for repair equipment and maintenance services. In 2007, plans called for several support facilities along the Nevada rail line, including an interchange facility near the mainline railroad, Another is the maintenance of way facility near the midway point of the line, and a third will be the rail equipment maintenance yard near the end of the line. Interchange facilities are siding tracks where locomotives can leave non-nuclear shipments and Department of Energy locomotives can pick them up. Non-nuclear materials could include building supplies, fuel, ballast, machinery, or empty canisters for use at Yucca Mountain. The final steps in the construction of any rail line include testing and training. Engineers will test all signals and switching equipment, take detailed track measurements, and perform dry runs of the entire line. Rail construction has come a long way in the last 100 years. What was once backbreaking manual labor is now handled by massive machines. The planning and design process takes into account the concerns of people living in the area. The end result is safer construction and a safer, more efficient railroad.